Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master in the Word of God. We started a series on Monday entitled Leadership, and we noticed that the word leadership uh, starts with the word lead, like a lead balloon sinks. Sometimes leadership is like a lead balloon, lead. But uh, if you keep on with that word, leadership, leadership causes people not to sink, and institutions not to sink, and a nation not to sink, but leadership causes things to go up. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And we talked about what leadership is. It's not titles, it's not office holding, it is influence, influence. Whoever influences you is your leader. Whoever you influence, uh, you're leading them. We talked about yesterday how, what leaders do, that leaders are thinkers. Leaders read, leaders study the best practices, leaders uh, consult with the experts and have mentors and listen to tapes. They're always learning. When you stop learning, you stop leading. You can never stop learning if you're going to be a leader. Uh, there was a woman here in our church and she was a great, great leader uh, and she transitioned home. Her name was Anna Birch. And uh, if I wanted to know something about technology, and she's up in her 90s, I'd go to Anna because Sister Birch, uh, back in the day, in her, in her advanced years, was very proficient in technology. And in fact, all the Birches are like that uh, in our church. But regardless of how old you get, you cannot stop learning. You got to keep on leading. Here's another aspect of leadership. We talked about what leadership is. We talked about leadership is thinking. If you didn't get the, that tape uh, and hear that PowerPoint to ponder, go back and listen to it and take notes. Take notes. Leadership also is courage. Courage. It takes courage to be a leader. Uh, Richard Nixon, who was the president of the United States, of course, he resigned because of, of uh, Watergate, uh, did some unscrupulous things, but he was a brilliant man. And he, in theory, knew what leadership was all about. He's probably one of the smartest presidents that this country has ever had. Richard Nixon said this about leadership. He said that leaders must have a head, a heart, and guts. Head, heart, guts. Head means you've been thinking, as we talked about yesterday. You know what needs to be done because you've been reading You've been looking at best practices. You've got mentors who've mentored you. It's in your head. But you also have to have a heart, which means that you really are concerned. You're passionate. If you don't have a passion for something, you won't succeed in it. You've got to be passionate about whatever you are doing. Passion will keep you going. When you have passion, you may get tired in the work, but you'll never get tired of the work. You'll never get tired of it because you have passion. You've got to have a head thinking heart because you love what you're doing and love the people that you're leading. But Richard Nixon said head, heart, and guts. And guts means you must be willing to take some risk and face some criticism because leadership sometimes is loneliness. It's lonely at the top because you're out of step many times as leaders with those who are following you, are people who are around you. You're, you're, you're stepping one way, they're stepping a, a different way, and sometimes it's an act of loneliness. But the beautiful thing about when you as a leader, you have courage, your courage becomes contagious. It becomes contagious. And that's what we read in the book of Philippians, chapter one and verse 14. Paul is in jail. And he's writing from jail, but he's being bold and courageous. And because he's being bold and courageous, uh, it is influencing. That's what leadership is. Leadership is influencing. It is making other people find their courage. It says, most, Paul says, most of, the, most of the brothers in the Lord have gained confidence from my imprisonment and dare even more to speak the message fearlessly. Look at some of these words in this verse. Confidence, courage, in other words, 
because I've exhibited courage or confidence, others have confidence because confidence and courage is always contagious. And the sign that you have courage and confidence is you what? You dare or you take risk. Now, w during one of these lessons, I've already shared with you that leadership is visualization, mobilization, monetization, visualization. And vision is important. Vision is because you've been doing your thinking, your due diligence, you know where you need to go. You know where the organization needs to go. That's what vision is. But if all you have is vision, that's not leadership. Vision without venture is just wishful thinking. You have to have a vision, but you have to have a venture. You've got to be willing to take some risk. And when you take some risk, well, sometimes you will be criticized because you take risk. What? In less than a week, we will vote for a leader for this country. The difference between a politician and a statesman is this. Politicians, they, they determine what they say based on polls. They find out what people want to hear, and that's what, that's what they share with people. That's what politicians do. They tell people what they want to hear. But a statesman is somebody who tells people not what they want to hear, but tells them what they need to hear, even when it is not popular. When Hitler was building up his army, England had a leader by the name of Neville Chamberlain. And he knew that the people did not want to engage in any war because they just left World War I that ended in 1918. And here it is, the 1930s, and Hitler is rebuilding. But Neville Chamberlain, knowing that the people don't want to talk about Hitler and war in Germany, kept telling the people what the people wanted to hear. In other words, that Germany was no threat. But there was another leader who was not a politician but a statesman. And he kept telling people that we are going to war with Germany if we don't put a stop to Hitler. And he was the most unpopular man in the nation, and that man was Winston Churchill. And everybody kicked him in his behind because he chose not to be a politician but to be a leader with courage. And when you are a person of courage, expect to get kicked in the behind. If you're getting kicked in the behind, think about it. If somebody's kicking you in the behind, that means you're in front. That means you're ahead of them because you can't kick a person in behind unless the person whom you're kicking is ahead of you. So take it as a compliment. And furthermore, it doesn't matter where people kick you. It's where you land. Sometimes they kick you forward and you don't realize it why you are being kicked. To be a leader means to be a person of conviction and not of convenience. It means to be a person of courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is an assessment that there's something worth risking that is greater than my fears. And to be a great leader, it is important that you exercise courage. Someone said that the worst thing in life is not failing. If you're a leader, the worst thing in life is not failing. The worst thing in life is succeeding in things that really don't matter. And if you're going to succeed in the things that do matter, then you've got to ask God to give you some courage. Why? Because as a leader, you influence people. And if you're not confident, if you always panic, when things go wrong, people don't see you in control, then they lose control. But when things are bad and people see you saying, it's okay, we're going to make it. Don't worry about it. Things are going to get better. Uh, a door's going to open up. When they see you as a leader with confidence, then they will gain confidence also. Because Paul said, while in jail, he said, most of the brothers in the Lord may have gained, have, have, Lord, have gained confidence from my imprisonment. Confidence. 
and dare even to, to more to speak the message fearlessly. Leaders influence, leaders are thinkers, leaders exercise courage. Don't take counsel to your fears. Take counsel with your faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the calling upon all of us to be leaders, to influence people. I thank you that we don't have to have a title or an office to be a leader. We just have to uh, uh, want to influence people and make our world better as a result of our influence. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will activate the leadership that is in all of us so that we can make our world better. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with us uh, today. This is Wednesday. Come and join us tonight for Bible study, worship um, at 7 o'clock. The pre-worship experience begins at 6.30, so join us at 6.30. And I have a word I'd like to share with you today, later this evening, uh, for Bible study. Come and join us. And then also, don't forget, if you have not voted, go out and vote. If you want to know in Kentucky or Louisville where you go to vote, then go to online, govoteky.gov. God bless you. Love to have you become a part of St. Stephen Church. If you don't have a church home, uh, email us at newstart at ssclive.org. Appreciate you so much. Let's close with the final salutation during COVID-19. Stay safe, stay sane. If you can't stay home and stay ready, stay ready and go ahead and vote. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.